क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोज फ्रॉम ईकीडा हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस वीडियो हियर वी आर विथ चैप्टर नंबर टू ऑफ माइक्रोवेव इंजीनियरिंग इन चैप्टर नंबर टू वी स्टार्टेड व्हाट एग्जैक्टली द माइक्रोवेव लीनियर बीम ट्यूब्स आर द वेरी पॉपुलर टू कैविटिकल स्टोन वी आर कवर्ड विथ वी हैव सीन द वेलोसिटी मॉड्यूलेशन एज प्रिंसिपल ऑफ ऑपरेशन डिराइव फ्यू ऑफ द पैरामीटर्स विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू द परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ टू कैविटिकल स्टोन सॉल्व फ्यू ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम्स ऑल्सो टू हैव हायर गेन अचीव्ड we have shifted from two cavity cluster to multi cavity cluster and also solved two problem with respect to the output power and output current that we have seen in the previous video let us solve problem number 3 For problem number three on multi cavity cluster the problem statement is given to us it is A four cavity cluster has following parameters. The parameters are beam voltage V zero is equal to ten kilovolts, beam current I zero is equal to zero point seven amperes, frequency F is equal to four gigahertz, beam coupling coefficient denoted as beta sub x i is equal to beta sub x zero is equal to one, DC electron beam current density rho sub x zero is equal to Phiu into 10 to the power phiu in minus coulomb per meter cube. Signal voltage V1 is equal to 2 volts into the RMS. Shunt resistance with respect to the cavity denoted as R sub x SH is equal to 10 kilo ohms. Total shunt resistance, including the load represented as R sub x SHL, is equal to phiu kilo ohms. So these are the given parameters. For the four cavity cluster, four is the number of cavities here. Now we have to determine in the part A the plasma frequency, in part B the reduced plasma frequency where R is equal to 0.6. In the part C the induced current in the output cavity, part D the induced voltage in the output cavity, and lastly the output power delivered to the load. so very first of all we shall be determining the plasma frequency for the four cavity cluster here the plasma frequency for the four cavity cluster is given by for part a we write it is given by omega sub x p and the formula is square root of here we have e into rho 0 divided by m into epsilon 0 so we take the ratio of e to m together so i make e by m Into rho zero divided by epsilon zero, the permittivity of the free space. So by the next step, we substitute the values to the right hand side. So here in the square root, E by M ratio, that value has one point seven five nine into ten to the power eleven here. In multiplication to rho zero, it is specified in the problem statement, phi u into 10 raised to the power minus 5, and it is divided by epsilon 0 is 8.854 into 10 raised to the power minus 12. So this is all under square root. This is in the denominator. So we have substituted the numerator as well as denominator, which is completely in the square root. Finally, after calculation, the plasma frequency omega sub x p is computed with the value 0. Nine nine seven into ten raised to the power nine radians per second should be the unit of measurement. So this way we are completed with first part of the problem statement. So plasma frequency value is available with us. Now the next task is to find reduced plasma frequency when R is equal to zero point six. So let us get to the reduced plasma frequency. For the multi cavity cluster, the reduced plasma frequency is denoted by omega sub x cube. Therefore, for part B, we write omega sub x cube, and the relation of the reduced plasma frequency with respect to the plasma frequency computed earlier is given as omega q is equal to R into omega p. R value, as per the problem statement, it is available to us. We put it as zero point six. And omega p is the answer of previous part. 
So the answer of previous part is 0 0.997 into 10 to the power 9 here into radians per second. So multiplying omega p by 0 0.6 v obtain the reduced plasma frequency omega sub x cube is equal to 0 0.598 into 10 to the power 9 radians per second here. So I outline this value. So this way the two parts A and B of the problem we are completed with. So here after plasma frequency and reduced plasma frequency we need to compute the induced current into the output cavity. So with respect to the video that the previous one we have seen we have the formulation for determination of induced current. So as our multi-cavity clistone has four cavities in total. So here we have for part C the induced current denoted by I4 in mod. So it is given by the formula 1 upon 8 in the bracket here we have I0 omega upon V0 into omega Q. This is having the power 3 in multiplication to beta 0 to the power 6 in multiplication to mod of V1 and here we have RSH square. So RSH value is given to us V1 is there beam coupling coefficient for the output cavity is also there. So I0 V0 the omega angular frequency and the reduced plasma frequency we have computed here. So by the next step we make it 1 upon 8 as it is inside the bracket here we put 0 0.7 divided by 10 into 10 raised to power 3 so it will be i0 upon v0 here now omega is 2 pi f so therefore we make 2 pi into 4 gigahertz that is 4 into 10 raised to power 9 divided by the reduced plasma frequency that we have determined into the previous section 0 0.598 into 10 raised to the power 9 here. We complete the bracket. It has the power 3 into here we have the coupling coefficient to the beam value 1 having the power 6 in multiplication to mod of V1 it has the value 2 hence mod 2 and finally in multiplication to RSH squared here. So that value is 10 into 10 raised to the power 3 as it is in kilos and it is to be squared here. So we have substituted all the values here into the right hand side for determination of mod of I4. So finally mod of I4 we compute with the answer 0 0.6365. As this is the current the current is always measured into the SI system in amperes. So I put amperes capital A as the measurement unit here. So I outline this particular value. We get back to the problem statement. So this is our problem statement. So the induced current into the output cavity that we have determined here for part C. The next task is to determine the answer for part D. In the part D we are asked to determine induced voltage into the output cavity. So let us solve this. Now as the multi-cavity cliston is having the four cavities, so we represented the current by I4. So for induced voltage we have the representation for part D it will be induced voltage mod V suffix 4 here. So simply we can use the previous answer mod I suffix 4 in multiplication to our SHL value considering the load here. So here mod I4 value is already available that is mod of 0 0.6365 we put into our SHL is 5 kilo ohms therefore 5 into 10 to the power 3 we make. So finally we obtain the answer that is 3.18 into 10 to the power 3 here. So this is nothing but 3.18 kilo volts. So induced voltage for the output cavity is 3.18 kilo volts I outline. So this was the answer for part D. 
Lastly, we need to compute the output power delivered to the load. The output power for the multi-cavity cliston can be denoted by P suffix out. So here for part E, we write P suffix out. So the power output delivered to the load can be given in terms of the current I4 that is mod square into R SHL here. So it is simply I square R. So here we put the value of I4. So in the mod it will be 0.6365 mod is squared here. In multiplication to the value of R SHL that is 5 into 10 raised to power 3. So by computation we obtain P out is equal to 2.03 into 10 raised to power 3. Therefore, we write the output power delivered to the load will be equal to 2.03 kilowatts. If it would be here, we simply write watts here, but we make kilowatts considering 10 raised to power 3 here. So this way, we are finished with the problem with respect to the multi-cavity cliston. This was the third problem. By the next lecture, we shall be addressing the another very popular microwave linear beam tube working as oscillator that is called as reflex keston. I hope you are definitely getting benefited by the knowledge we share through these videos. So for more information, you can subscribe to our Ikeda channel. Thank you.